how to drive a KZ. Well, my first tip is uh, usually the most people in the KZ2 or KZ1. They go in the corner too hard, so they lose in the, in the exit. So what I usually do is brake very hard in the beginning. Leave the brake a little bit. Um, also, when you have your feet support, you press your whole body into the chassis and then go back with lots of RPM. Usually 15.5, 15.6, more than enough. So you have lots of fuel for the exit. The fast corners, most of the time they're not full throttle, but uh, you can loosen a little bit throttle because sliding means uh, time loss. After, if you go into a chicane or something, it's uh, always everything with a KZ that was about the exit. If you go in the corner, you have to drive very careful, always one meter. You, it's the best to brake one meter early than one meter late because you miss five meters in the exit. If you go on the straight, um, it's always good to go down, but if you're tall like me, it's, uh, it's the wrong way because if we, I only can go forward and I'm stuck behind the steering wheel, so I always lean backwards to make me like more out of the wind. And uh, so you never see me ducking behind the steering wheel. Most people think I'm lazy, but for me it's faster. More aerodynamic. If you go in the low gear, the RPM is high and the chassis is very uncomfortable to drive. Especially if you try to overtake somebody. You go usually one gear more back than usual, than your usual corner. Because you brake later and you still have to stop the chassis and not take each other out. So you have to brake very hard and also use the engine. So if you have a second gear corner, a hairpin or something, like the first corner in Genk, it's uh, very hard to overtake there because many people, they miss the first corner then. So you go the first gear and then cut it around and then go again a short shift to second. Because if you keep it in second, I can assure you it's you are below RPM, out of the power band and well, you lose more positions than you want to take. You have to short shift after and then try to uh, well, get as straight as possible out of the corner because the straight line is always faster than the curve line. If you have a combination of several corners after each other, it's uh, usually the less drivers have a problem in the last two corners. If you have three corners, the first one is very fast, the second one is slower and the third one is also slower. And it's a lot of times it's good to Take the first corner a little bit less to make the other two much better and again work on the exit of the last corner because after every corner it's always a big straight. And if you have a long, a long straight after the corner, well, in the corner you maybe can win, gain one tenth on your opponent, but if you have a less exit you lose two, three tenths on your opponent who's slower in that corner. It's not always about corner speed, it's you, most of the time about corner exit speed that you gain at the straight. The best way to brake with the KZ card is, um, well, try to always brake in a straight line. If you have lots of corners where you have to brake in, usually you move the brake balance a little bit more to the back than the normal brakes, but if you can brake only in a straight line, it's 85% in the front. It's very hard um, to, uh, to set the brake balance because um, lots of corners are very straight braking, some corners you have to brake into the corner, so actually every corner is different and it's impossible to change the brake balance every lap, so you have to make a combination between and oh, you have to um, make some suffering in one corner and then gain in the other corner but that's racing and uh, well it's, it all depends on what's which combination and which tactics you're using with the chassis usually with softer chassis your breakway is much shorter because it's like a spring you can it, it does like this if you have a harder chassis it's more stiff and more unstable during the braking so it, it all depends around uh, about your chassis. So the best way to brake is not really in the driver, but how to set up the chassis because lots of chassis are different and setup is different. So it's, it's normal. 
You usually you make the brake power almost all to the front on the Keza. The best way to use your tires, I think to uh, warm them up really nice, like a zigzag, not sliding, but only uh, driving the normal line and not sliding the, the, the tire because you only heat the surface of the tire and not the whole tire. So in three, four laps, the surface get too hot and it starts to burn and you get slower. And with the other one, the carcass of the tire is much more warmer. So the chassis also behaves different and then you have much more pleasure and longer from your tires. The best way in the race, I think, is um, brake early. Don't try to overdrive the chassis. If you overdrive the chassis, it's, well, you, you burn out the tires and then five, six, seven laps, you're slower. You lose the time. If you can do a pace one tenth slow in the beginning, I think you're faster than in the whole race because if you do as, much, as fast as you can in the first ten laps, you lose more in the last couple of laps because the tires are just finished and uh, especially with the softer tires it's very important how you set the tire pressure how you overtake somebody if necessary you have to drive very careful and well treat treat your tires like your mother because uh, if you don't do they burn out <laughs> Sometimes you can, um, you can see uh, how the carburation from your engine is by closing one gap of the air filter. If your engine goes faster, then it's most of the time it's, uh, it's too lean or lean. Well, um, usually my engine stays the same if I close one gap. If it goes slower, the engine is too rich. So that's, that's one way to check your carburation in a fast way. And, uh, well, I do it a lot in the race also. If, uh, if I'm in the lead or something, then I, before the corner, full gas, I give them a little bit extra fuel so we don't break, to be sure. And, um, well, it's a way to finish the race, but you can also destroy your, your manifold uh, plates with it if you do too much, so be careful with it. Yeah, most of the time, usually the drives, when they go on the track, Nowadays they have a nice curtain in front of the radiator to heat it up, but back in the old days if you don't have a radiator you put your hand in front of it so it gets more temperature faster. Because if, you are, if your engine is below the 40 degrees it's quite dangerous to hit the throttle because well, the wind gets on, the cylinder gets, um, well, gets smaller and then the piston well, gets stuck in the cylinder and then the engine breaks. Well, usually the corner before I go a little bit more to the outside and then when he goes in, I'm on the bumper. And then, uh, well, if I'm on the bumper, then, well, it's, it's not easy with a, if it's easy with a KZ to break one meter later than the other guy. And then, well, you're in, in the inside, but the danger is coming out of the corner, how you handle it, if you're next to each other or if it's a left-hander, you have a problem. But if it's a right-hander, you go in faster than the other, and the other drivers, well, you overtake them. But it's, it's not easy because uh, lots of crashes um, uh, because of the unexperienced drivers, because they break too late and then jump on the other driver and then go over. And well, you get two angry guys. Yeah. But um, it's, it's hard to do a safe overtaking maneuver in karting because it's so close to each other and you never find a race with difference is more than three tenths of a second between drivers in the in the top five so it's um well it's, it's always close and it's all about engine and chassis if the drivers are the same so uh, if you have a good engine then you can pass them on the straight but if your engine is a little bit less you have a big problem because in the slipstream you can stay with them and then pass but the other driver can pass you on the next straight again because he has a faster engine and well, for me, it's, uh, it 
it has been difficult, but this year we have a very good engine, so for me it's passing more easy now. And uh, well, I hope in the future they get a little bit more better and uh, I can win easy, but it's always hard and uh, every weekend you have to fight for your position. Uh, I never won a race with big, big advantage, so uh, it's always close together. And always be prepared about the counter-attack from your fellow drivers. Turn one. It's uh, one of the hardest corners in the whole track because it's uh, the first uh, the first corner. Also after the start, it's a bottleneck. Everybody gets collided and gets together. It's a second gear corner. Usually I take him quite tight and um, let it roll because uh, if you go too slow, the engine drops below the RPM and uh, well you lose time. After you go to the second, you go to third or fourth gear. Depends how your your sprockets are. Um, it's a long right, left-hander, uh, it's a hard corner because lots of time you think you have oversteer but then you go on the throttle and then you have over understeer. So it's quite hard to set up the chassis. Um, what I always like to do is uh, take it in third gear and very short and then take as much as speed to the next left hand. It's almost full gas, one of the exciting corners of the track. What I always want to do is close the inside for the next corner because you always have uh, fast guys behind you uh, on that part of the track. So uh, the next one is a uh, tight hairpin. After is a very important straight. Usually you take it in second gear to hairpin. So you have uh, lots of speed in the exit. And then try to, well, try to get the sixth gear, but it's not always, uh, and the track's really good. You get to sixth when the track's not so good, you get to fifth gear. And then you go back to third, into the chicane. It's uh, quite famous from the, because the curb on the inside is quite high. And you take it and you lose the wheels and then it's quite nice to drive. But the chassis doesn't like it too much. But um, it's uh, very important to uh, shift on the curb because it's a, t a time gainer or a time loser. And the corner uh, after the chicane is very important to set up the chassis very well. You, uh, it's a long right-hander, it's uh, fourth gear, and then you come through the, through the corner. And if your chassis is right, you have to steer one or two times, not more. But the most of the guys, they slide and they lose one, two tenths, usually if the chassis is not right. If you go to the next hairpin, it's uh, quite a nice corner, really slow. Or really fast. It's a two-line corner. You can do it in third gear or in the second gear. Usually I prefer in the second gear because in the race you always drive second gear and then you go out really tight and if you do third gear you make it really wide. So you also use a little bit more tire. Then you go on uh, to, the, to the grandstand in front of the, the, the catering area. It's my favorite spot to overtake, so uh, everybody be prepared. Um, I remember my world championship there, I took the lead in 2011. So uh, it was quite uh, one of the, my favorite corners because it's very hard braking, back to third gear, and then cut the wheel to go in. Very smooth out because it's bumpy and bumpy. Then you go around uh, the grandstand to a left or a left hander. Fourth gear, quite fast. Uh, chassis is not so important, but the driver has to uh, has everything under control in that corner. You go into the last corner; it's always tricky because if you go in wide, it's faster. But if you go in too wide, people get inside you and then push you off the line, and then you lose four or five spots. You see it many times in the races if you drive it. And what I prefer is a little bit more to the inside, third gear, and then directly up to fourth, fifth and then come over start finish line and hopefully uh, your engine is a better engine than your fellow driver and you keep the lead. So that's my lap around Genk.